So if you have been coding with AI lately, you probably know that just throwing random prompts at your coding assistant and hoping it works out is kind of a mess. I mean, you got some code back, it looks decent at first, but then you realize half of it does not actually solve your problem. You are stuck in the loop of debugging A-generated stuff that you could have probably built by yourself in the same amount of time. So today, I want to show you something different. There are these structured frameworks that are designed to actually organize how you work with AI coding tools. And I tested three of them to see which ones are worth your time. I'm going to build the same project three separate times using OpenSpec, GitHub Spec Kit, and then the BMAD method. The project I choose is a customer relationship management dashboard, basically a CRM dashboard with React, Tailwind, and Shared CN components. I will be using VS Code with GitHub Copilot integrated, and for all three frameworks, I am going to use the same Cloud Sonnet model to keep things fair. The CRM needs a customer list with filtering options, a dashboard showing sales metrics and charts, and a task management section where you can assign follow-ups to different team members. Nothing crazy complex, but enough to actually test how these frameworks handle real development work. Let's start with OpenSpec, because honestly this one surprised me with how fast it moved. OpenSpec is built by a smaller team called Fission AI, and it's all about keeping your specification as a single source of truth. The installation is super straightforward, you just run npm install globally to get the CLI tool, then navigate to your project folder and run OpenSpec in it. It asks which AI assistant you are using. I selected Copilot and it sets up this folder structure in your project. The workflow revolves around something they call change proposals. So instead of just asking your AI to build stuff, you first ask it to create a proposal for whatever feature you want to add. For example, I told Copilot to create an open spec proposal for the customer dashboard with filtering capabilities. What it does is create a new folder under open spec changes and inside that folder, it generates a proposal markdown file, a task markdown file and these spec files. The specs are really clever because they only shows what's changing, not your entire specification document. Once the proposal is generated, you can run open spec validate to make sure everything follows the right format and open spec show to review the full proposal. If you need changes, you just ask your AI to update the proposal, like adding acceptance criteria or edge cases. When you are happy with it, you tell your AI to implement the change, and it works through all the tasks in that task markdown file. After implementation is done, you run OpenSpec Archive, which merge those specs into your main project specs. The first iteration took me about 12 minutes from proposal to working dashboard. I'm not exaggerating. 12 minutes and I had a functional customer dashboard with working filters and responsive layout. Because it was so quick, I actually had time to iterate. I took a screenshot of what was generated, fed it back to the AI and asked for the improvement as well. Added some subtle animation when you hover over customer cards, improved the color scheme to be more modern and get the whole thing polished up. One thing I really liked about OpenSpec is how lightweight it feels. You are not managing a bunch of different AI agents or orchestrating some complex process. It's just you and your coding assistant, but with this structured framework, making sure you both agree on what needs to happen before any code gets written. The downside is, it's still relatively new. The community is smaller compared to GitHub-backed projects, and I did run into a couple of rough edges with documentations as well. Alright, moving on the GitHub spec kit. This one is officially maintained by GitHub, so it has the corporate backed and pretty large community. The installation uses the tool called UV, which is a Python package manager. You install UV first, then use it to install the spec kit CLI. Once that's done, you run specify in it in your project directory, pick your AE assistant and it scaffold out the necessary files and templates. Spec kit follows a four phase process. First is specify, where you describe what you want to build and the AI generates a detailed specification document. Second is plan, where you add technical constraints like your tech stack, architecture pattern, performance requirements and the AI create a technical plan. Third is task, where the AI breaks that plan into a checklist of small implementation tasks. Fourth is implement, where the AI execute those tasks and writes the code. One really useful feature is the constitution file. This is where you define high level rules for your project that the AI has to follow at all time. For example, I added rules like always use proper TypeScript types, never use any other type. Follow the specific naming convention for components and always include error handling for AP calls. The AI references this constitution throughout every phase, so you get consistent code quality. 
the implementation of my crm dashboard took about 90 minutes with spec it that sounds slower than open spec but the extra time was spent up front in the specification and planning phases what i got at the end was more thoroughly planned out the architecture plan included things like component hierarchy stage management patterns and data flow diagrams the generated code had better separation of concerns, more reusable components, and felt more maintainable. I also noticed that when I came back later to add the task management feature as a second iteration, the whole cycle was incredibly smooth. The AI already understood the project structure from the existing specs, so it generated a new feature that fit perfectly with what was already there. No conflict, no weird inconsistencies, just clean integration. Now for BMAD, which stands for Breakthrough Method for Agile AI Driven Development, this one is fundamentally different from the other two. BMAD simulates an entire software development team using specialized AI agents. You have got an analyst agent, a product manager agent, an architecture agent, a scrum master agent, a developer agent, and a QA agent as well. Each one has a specific role and they work together to build your project. The installation is single npx command that sets up the framework in your project. The process starts with documentation heavy planning. You work with the product manager to create detailed product requirement documents and architecture specifications. These are not just quick notes, they are comprehensive documents that would normally take a team days to produce. The AI generates them through this iterative refinement process where you review and provide feedback. After the planning phase, the project gets broken down into epics and user stories. Here is where BMAD become a time sink. For every single story, you manually run a loop. First, you call the Scrum Master Agent to draft the story with all the acceptance criteria and technical details. Then you hand it over to the Developer Agent to write the implementation. Finally, you pass the finished code to the QA Agent for review. You are basically acting as a project manager or testing these different agents. For my CRM dashboard, this whole process took about 5 and a half hours. Yes, you hear that right. 5 and half hour for the same project that took 12 minutes with open spec. Why so long? Because you are chained to the computer managing every hands off between agents. Each agent takes several minutes to process and you cannot just walk away because you need to trigger the next agent in the sequence. I tried running multiple terminals at once to speed things up. But you have to constantly clear contacts between agent switches so they don't get confused about their role. By the end, I was genuinely exhausted and questioning whether this is worth it. But I have to admit the result was impressive. The design system was more sophisticated than what the other framework produced. The component library had consistent patterns, proper accessibility attributes, and the core documentation was thorough. All the features worked correctly on the first try. It felt like a software that was built by an actual team rather than generated by an AI. So let's talk about what these frameworks are actually trying to do differently. BMAD operate at the macro level. It's managing your entire project life cycle from initial planning through quality assurance. It brings a really high adoption overhead because you are essentially changing your whole development process. Open spec and the spec kit operate at the micro level. They are focused on individual features or tasks within a project. The adoption overhead is low. They are lightweight tools that add structure to your existing workflow without completely changing how you work. Here is the thing, these differences explain the massive time gap. BMAT took 5 and a half hour because it was building out governance structure, documentation standard and quality process that would normally exist in a large organization. Spec it took 12 minutes because it was laser focused on just implementing a feature based on a clear specification. Spec it took 90 minutes because it balanced upfront planning with implementation efficiency. So which one should you actually use? I think it depends entirely on what you are building and where you work. If you are a solo developer or part of a small team building products quickly, open spec is probably your best bet. It's fast, it's lightweight and it does not get in your way. You maintain control while still getting the benefits of structured development. The smaller community is a downside but the framework itself is solid and actively developed. Spec it makes sense if you want something with more structure and corporate backing. The four-phase process ensures you think through requirement and architecture before jumping into code. The constitution file is great for maintaining consistency across a team. It's a good middle ground between speed and thoroughness. 
the github connection means it's not going anywhere bmad is really designed for enterprise scenarios industries like healthcare finance or other regulated specs where you need to prove that your development process followed proper protocols the end to end version control create an order trail where every decision is traceable for a large organization that need that level of control and documentation bmad provide critical value the current version is absolutely overkill unless you have very specific compliance requirement it's worth mentioning that bmad has a version 6 in development that promises major improvement but it's currently in alpha for early adopters only the big takeaway here is that structured aid development is generally better than just getting it done with random prompts whether you need the speed of open spec the balance of spec kit or the comprehensive governance of bmad using a methodology make your a assisted coding more predictable maintainable and professional these frameworks force you to think through what you are building before you build it which is something we should have been doing all along regardless of whether a is involved so that's it from the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please like this video and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one